Hey guys, it's Chris, and uh, today we're going to be replacing a clock chip. Um, my 3000 here, as you saw in my restoration videos, I put the new battery in after we repaired the board. But what happens is uh, it won't hold the time. Every time I had to put the preference here on the desktop, uh, every time I start the computer, it's always June 15th, 2019. Um, I can set the time here, and we'll just say uh, September, October, uh, what's today's date? Uh, let's just say 30th, and it is currently 4.14 p.m., I'll make it 4.15 p.m., save. The clock will update, 16.15.02, I'll turn the unit off. Does the date stick? I don't know. Oh, time automatically shifted from daylight saving time to normal. It did? Okay. What's the time? Uh, my clock isn't there. It's 3.15 p.m. now. So, it was... It has old daylight savings time rules. I also added in four more megs of RAM, so I have 12... 14 total with the 2 mega chip. Now, that's with the power on. So, you know, power off, of course. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power off to the whole computer, like the feed itself. Nothing. Turn the power back on, or for the monitor to click on. And now turn the Amiga back on. Our time is working. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So let's get it taken apart and we'll look at the battery and the chip that we're talking about replacing. Right, so we're back with a partial disassembly. Um, what I'm going to do is the chip actually is a socketed chip. It's this chip right here. This is a uh, Ryko, Ryko, R I C O H R P C 501. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to check the voltage on my battery 3.5 volts. So the battery is fine. Now, this was the area where it was really bad, top and bottom of the board. Just wondering if it's just not making good contact. Well, I'm going to use my old chip puller. Quick and dirty. Okay. So the RPC501 seems to look okay. The socket itself seems to look okay. Capacitors have all been replaced. The battery is getting voltage. What is my voltage like on pin 1 now? 0 0.11 and falling. And the legs are always bent the hell out really far. Alright. New chip in. Now I'm going to plug in the keyboard. Turning the unit on. Okay, our time is... Why does my display look so weird? It has... This monitor has been acting stupid for a while. If I change its brightness, it'll be fine. So it's not the Amiga that's weird. There's banding strips in this stupid monitor. So we're back to June 15th. 2019, so we're going to go October 30th, it's 4.33 p.m. Save. New, oops, new chip's in, I'm bumping things on the Amiga. So the new chip is in, now we're going to turn it off. And now we're going to turn it back on. I'm also going to measure some voltages. 
on that pin. And so where the old chip pin one was in the threes, 4.43 volts and steady. Well, let's turn it back on with the new clock chip. And what we're going to do is we are going to fix this weird camera angle. We're going to run like sysinfo and make sure it sees the clock now. Because it was saying that the clock was not present before. What's up with that? Well, at least the clock is found now. I don't know why it's not working correctly. 1637. It's about a minute off. The timer is a little slow, but that's what that potentiometer next to the battery is for. So we're going to turn that off and I'm going to tweak it ever so slightly. I think it's a little slow. I don't know why it's Okay, 442, 442. So the potentiometer I'm screwing with is this yellow hat sucker right here near the battery. And that is next to the new clock chip that's in. And there we go, technical tap, fix the banding. <laughs> uh, I guess adjusting my display pressed against some plastic. I don't know. So now let's turn it off. 1642, 30. Clock on the computer says 4:43:48. I don't know the exact time, and this is back to 4:41 p.m. So we're losing minutes, mad here. 4:44. All right. So we're about in time with Windows. We'll turn this off after setting the clock. All right, it's just about 4.45 and 20 seconds. It'll take the Amiga probably about that to boot. Okay, it'll be 4.45 with the machine boots. Exactly 4.45. And this is 44 and 25 seconds. So we're still, we're losing time. So my direction is wrong on the Amiga. And this is pretty much a useless endeavor. I don't use this machine regularly. 446 and 10 seconds on the PC will be 447. So this is 10 seconds behind the computer. So at least I'm going in the right direction on the potentiometer. I'm doing small, small turns at a time. 47, 20. So we're about 10 or 15 seconds too slow. Oops. So in a continuing battle with this trimmer capacitor, uh, I called it a potentiometer, which it does look like a potentiometer, but it's according to the 3000 schematic and manual, it is a trimmer capacitor with a value that is between uh, 22 and 47 picofarad. So I have to keep playing with it, uh, adjusting it high makes my clock very slow. Adjusting it down all the way to 22 speeds it up too much. So I have to go, it's, it's very touchy. I have to go little like micro bumps to get the right, the right level. Uh, I don't know what it was set at originally, but it wasn't holding time for, for crap. And now it is holding time, the, the, it works, but you have to restart after, you know, making the adjustment. So, so using my time preferences now, it is October 30th, 2019 at 5.08 p.m. And it seems to be, uh, seems to be holding and I can click save finally. And Sysinfo is now reporting that the clock is found. So we have successfully fixed our clock and small movements on that trimmer capacitor. Any large movements will result in minutes, many minutes uh, out of time. And it's between 22 and 47 
picofarad on that capacitor, so it's a little tiny, uh, tiny movements make your clock tick slow or fast. So that's it. We've replaced and repaired the chip and the clock in the 3000. Stay tuned for more videos, and thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.